Hi friends, why do you keep getting predators in your lobbies? Do you ever load into a game and sometimes see this, where the champions are stacked predators? Or do you get killed during a game and you look at the person's banner and realise, wait, this is a predator that just killed me? Well, it's something I see a lot of people have trouble with, especially those of you that feel you're not at predator level. So I thought I'd put together this guide on how SBMM works and cover some of the reasons why you find you're in lobbies with predators, or at least players that are supposedly better than you based on their account stats. Now of course Respawn don't actually release any specific details about what contributes to their SBMM, which actually stands for Skill Based Matchmaking if you're wondering what SBMM stands for. However I have done a lot of research into the factors that typically contribute to matchmaking in games. So I'll share some insight into the research I've done and hopefully give you an idea of what contributes to you getting predators in your lobbies. Oh and by the way, if you think SBMM is something that's only recently come to Apex, Here's a quote from Chad Grenier, the game director for Apex Legend, about SBMM having always been in the game. Although I should say I do think they've been tweaking it over time, and as we've gone through the seasons, I think they have been making small and subtle changes to the way matchmaking works. To be fair, I think you'd expect that for a constantly evolving game, so it's not a massive surprise. Okay, so firstly let's talk about what skill-based matchmaking is, and then we'll look at some of the factors that actually make up skill-based matchmaking. So skill based matchmaking in its simplest form is a way to use the perceived skills of a player by the system to sort them into lobbies with similarly skilled players to form the 60 player lobbies that are currently required for Apex Legends. Now the assessment of skill is what the skill based matchmaking system determines and it's not often as simple as we think of it in our heads. Oh, and I should say, the overall purpose of SBMM, if you're wondering, is really to ensure new and less skilled players don't get stomped by active, more skilled players. Again, this isn't always perfect, and when we go through the factors, you understand a little bit more around why sometimes you do get predators in your lobbies. So looking at these factors that contribute to skill-based matchmaking, the first is your KD ratio. So this is the number of kills you get in games versus the number of times you die. Now, there's two types of KD. There's the KD in your most recent performance, and then there's also your account KD, which you can see in your stats on your account. Next, we also have survival time. As we know, Apex Legends measures how long you survive. This not only contributes to your battle pass and your player account level, but it's also used as a stat to assess your skill level. The longer you survive in games indicates that your skill level is potentially higher. Again, bear in mind, no one of these factors single-handedly contributes to where you get placed in terms of your SBMM and your matchmaking. It's a combination of all of these factors. So as I talk through them, try and keep an open mind and not think individually about a single factor contributing to you getting predators in your lobby. Think of these collectively. In addition to your KD and your survival time, your placement is of course another factor. If you win a game versus if you're first to die in a lobby also indicates your skill level. Now a lot of those are more in terms of recent performance as well as your account level but if we think more in terms of your account metrics your player level does also play a role. For example if you're level 200 it will try and match you with other level 200 players. Now of course if you listen to the other factors as well you understand why this isn't always the case and sometimes let's say as a level 100 player you can easily get level 500 players in your lobbies. Oh, and some other things that contribute to the skill-based matchmaking are more around performance metrics. So things like your accuracy, how many shots do you hit in a game, how much do you miss versus how many shots do you actually hit. Those kind of accuracy metrics, I also believe make up a performance element of skill-based matchmaking that is used to indicate your skill level in the system. Now, if you look at all of these factors that contribute to skill-based matchmaking, you can see there are differences between account level stats versus your recent performance. And I think the system places a heavier weight on your recent performance in addition to your account stats. And from what I've seen, it seems to work over your last 10 to 20 games. It looks at the stats of these recent games to also assess your skill. And by this, I mean, if you have a certain account kill death ratio for your lifetime in Apex, but you have a higher KD ratio in your most recent 10 to 20 games, you are likely to find yourself in harder lobbies. Now there's something else that's important to consider, and these are the elements outside of what's considered skill, and this forms the wider part of matchmaking in games like Apex Legends. The first key part is the time that someone's been searching for a game. You see, they don't want people waiting hours to try and find a game, because that's a really bad player experience. 
So if a predator's been waiting a long time, it's quite possible they will be in your game, even if their account stats are way better than yours. Also, someone's connection to a server is also taken into account. This is their ping. Ideally, you don't want to be getting in lobbies with people that have a better or worse ping than you because it will give you that feeling that you're at a disadvantage. So again, it's possible that a predator has been waiting a long time to get into a lobby and they might have a similar ping to you and that's why they keep ending up in your lobbies. Now those two are key elements, but the third is even bigger and this is the number of players that are on a server at any given time. Now this is often dictated by the time of day or night that you're playing the game, as well as the location that you're in. And by location, I mean the server that you're playing on. And actually, Jason McCord, the design director for Apex, shared an experience from Twitter that essentially backs up this fact. As you can see from the tweet, someone's complaining about facing predators in Platinum. And Jason McCord asks what server the person is on and what time that person's playing. The response from the player is that they're on Iowa at 2am, to which Jason's response basically confirms that they set up matchmaking in a way that tries to balance all of these factors. But if you're on a server which doesn't have many players at a given time, for example, this player playing at 2am, then it's a good example of a situation where you'll get predators in your lobbies. And those are all the factors that I found in my research that potentially contribute to you getting predators in your lobbies in Apex Legends. Ultimately, if you do find predators in your lobbies, it's not just because the game is being mean, or that it thinks you should be competing against predators, it's simply due to a combination of these matchmaking parameters that I've shared in this video. And simply, you have a space in your lobby, and there's a predator that's been waiting for a space in a game, and they simply have to sort that predator into your lobby to fill that space. And I know sometimes it does suck when you're on a low level and you keep getting put with predators, but unfortunately, you'll just have to trust the matchmaking system and hope eventually it will sort you into lobbies that are fairer for you. And from what I've seen, over 10 to 20 games, this does tend to even out and you do ultimately find you are in lobbies that suit your style or your level. And if you're really finding it hard to get lobbies where you're not with predators, it might just be it's not a very busy server and there aren't enough players. So try switching servers to a more active server and that might actually help you get easier lobbies. As you can see, it's very clear a lot goes into matchmaking and skill-based matchmaking isn't just a button you can flick on and off. It's a set of components that form part of matchmaking. In fact, let me share a tweet from a Call of Duty developer that said something very interesting to support this. I know it's a completely different game, but a lot of games do use similar systems and then add their own tweaks to it. A well-known system for skill-based matchmaking is Microsoft's True Skill. I would suggest Googling it if you don't know what it is, because it's actually quite interesting to understand a bit more about how matchmaking works in games. Now I know there are lots of different opinions, and some people think skill-based matchmaking shouldn't be used, and others are really happy with it. In this video, I'm not aiming to change your mind, I simply wanted to give you some information based on the research I've done to help you understand a little bit more around skill-based matchmaking. And hopefully you now have a better idea of why sometimes you get predators in your lobbies. Don't forget to like and subscribe, come join our community of friends. For now though, thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.